24 years as the commissioner of the Ohio Athletic Conference and the color commentator for WOBN on the original broadcast of the Rhine River game, making his first appearance back on WOBN in two decades, Tim Gleason. Tim, thank you so much for your time. It was back in 1992 that Otterbein and Heidelberg played in the first college football game in Europe. You were in just your second year as commissioner of the league. Where did the inspiration for this game come from? They had been talking about uh, getting a college football game in Germany because uh, the World Football League was just starting up, and they wanted the German people to know what American football was all about. Uh, so what they did was they wanted a couple of big powers, you know, Notre Dame and Boston College type schools, and the financing fell through. Uh, they couldn't work out all of the uh, uh, the financing. So what I did was suggest to them that uh, if they used a couple of uh, Division three schools, they wouldn't have to worry about paying us. All they would have to do is is just uh, pay for uh, transportation expenses for the for the students. And they thought that was a great idea. I even uh, sold them on the fact that Otterbein and Heidelberg are two German names and would fit well with the German people. They would recognize the names of the, of the colleges. And the, the other uh, piece of it was that if, if they hadn't been accustomed to American football, they wouldn't know the difference, maybe, between Division One and Division Three. A good football game is a good football game, and it just so happened that the final score was seven to seven. It was a tie game, so there was a lot of defense. There wasn't uh, there wasn't a lot of offense uh, for the for the German fans, but they did see a good defensive battle, and it was a tie game. So uh, there was no lopsided score. For many German fans, this was probably the first time they watched an American football game. How'd they receive it? They were they were fascinated by it. Uh, they, of course, are used to their own football, which is what we call soccer. But they they were fascinated by by the passing game, and uh, especially a big, uh, rugby uh, is is something that they were a little bit familiar with as far as uh, the running game, but they were really fascinated by the passing game, although there wasn't too much passing in that game. Tim, you did color commentary for the game on WOBN. What do you remember most about the contest? Unfortunately, after 24 years, <laughs> uh, the only thing I can remember is uh, the linebacker from Otterbein uh, getting hurt and, uh, and, and having to stay over when the rest of the team left, uh, the young man had to stay over in a German hospital and, and get stabilized. Uh, I think it was a, a back injury, and they wanted to be extra careful, and that was pretty traumatic. Any chance we could see a game in Europe sometime in the future? Well, probably not, uh, because uh, it's, it's very difficult to uh, play a regular season game overseas uh, unless you were to do it maybe the first game of the season uh, because you don't want to uh, have to come back from a trip to uh, Europe and immediately have a game the, the next weekend. So uh, those games are always tough uh, logistically to do, and, and I don't think uh, that the, uh, the, the World Football League uh, is is around anymore to help fund our expenses? So that would be another thing where it would be it would be more expensive. I, I don't know that I would rule it out. Uh, it would it would have to be an, un, an ambitious undertaking. Tim Otterbein hasn't won the cup since 2010, but Heidelberg is winless this year. Coming into this year's game, any predictions for this year's contest? No, I I've learned a long time ago not to uh, make any predictions because as soon as you think you know what's going to happen uh, in this game, something else happens. And uh, it's, it's one of these games where the kids know that they're, they're playing for the Rhine River Cup. Uh, we made the cup. As soon as we got back from that game, 
uh, we decided to make this big old trophy and uh, and we decided to give it to the, the winner of this game annually. And through the years, it has aged gracefully and there's there's a lot of character and charm to the to the trophy itself uh, because it's been passed around through the years. But I think that adds to the to the lore of it all. And these kids, uh, they, they're playing for a cup. It's, it's like a bowl game. And, uh, you know, an early season, mid-season bowl game. And so you can throw out the records when that happens. Tim, thank you so much for your time. We hope to see you soon. Thank you.